What is up, people? Welcome back to episode number 64 today of the My Player Career Mode. Before we get into today's episode, I want to thank you all for your continued support on the series. It is great to see so many of you enjoying this series. But today, I'm actually going to put out a little poll for, for you people to vote on because I want to get your, your guys' input. Um, usually, when we have finals in the series, we like to live episode, you know, live com them during the episode. However, this time around, I've decided I'm going to do it a bit differently. So, because we know we've got a final coming up with Ben in the Copa de España, I'm going to let you guys have the choice as to how the episode goes. I've seen comments in the past about face reveals and stuff like that. Um, now, I have got a series currently going, if you want to check it out, The Crew Road to Glory, where we usually use face cam. But today, I'm going to give you something special. I'm going to give you a poll for you guys to decide which way you want me to do the episode when we play that final. We are approaching the back end of the season, so it's not too long away in the distance. So the options you have available is for us to do it the usual way, where we'll have it as its own individual episode, and I'll do a live com over the gameplay. Or the second way that I'm going to give you guys the option of is going to be that we will do it as part of a live stream, where I will also use a face cam as well on top. So... That's the options that you guys have. I just want to kind of know for now so I know how much I want to kind of, I guess, build up to it and then know that I'm going to have a day to actually live stream. If you don't know, I do work weekends a fair bit. So, of course, I want to do it on a weekend. It's when most of you guys will have time off as well from school or college or whatever it is that you guys do. So I want to make sure that everybody you know, has the option to watch it is, is kind of what I'm getting at here. So let me know what you think regarding that poll. It'll be in the top right, of course. The two options I said to do it the usual way that we always have done, or this time around to do it as a live stream with a face cam on there as well. Kind of killing two birds with one stone, I guess you could say, with me doing face cam. And also, we'll be able to have a live stream as well, because that's another thing that a lot of people request from me. It's difficult to do, but I'm happy to do it for a one-off, like, final kind of special type thing. So, yeah. But as we get into today's episode, apologies for it being a little bit delayed as well. As I usually say, I like to get these out at 4pm, but today there is no way that's going to happen. I was called into work a little bit earlier, um, so I wasn't expecting that. And of course, come back a bit later today, which means now that is the reason why I, uh, I have this video kind of a bit delayed. But the episode itself, we kickstart it off with a game against Sevilla, which you're already seeing in action here. And already the score is 1-0 inside the first half. This one, though... Very lucky with the way this ball ends up going in. It takes three deflections on the way through and then takes a fourth one as Bamiyang somehow gets the uh, the goal here. You can see it's ended up with a back heel, which the defender tries to slide tackle to clear away. He hits himself with his own goalkeeper and Real Madrid take the lead. It's crazy. And somehow Bamiyang is credited with that goal as well. I mean, ridiculous. Anyways, as we continue on into the second half, Bale on the ball finds its way to Bamiyang. Bamiyang back to Ben. He does a defender there, just says, see you later, mate. And unfortunately, he can't find the uh, the finish there to make the score 2 nil. As he moves into the last couple of minutes here, you can see Pizarro on the ball, giving it away, trying to get his hand back onto the edge of it here. But Ben on the counter-attack now as he finds Gareth Bale down the right. Look at the run from Ben, though. He continues it right into the area. Nobody picks him up. He's clean, free, and he gets the goal to make the score 2 nil. Again, the goalkeeper, he got hands to this, but there is really nothing that he could have done because, to, uh, to, to say the least, his defenders there really didn't help out. You know, there's three of them there. Obviously, they didn't know where Ben was at the time until he scored the goal, but surely one of them should have said to another one who was running behind, you know, somebody's got to pick him up. And uh, nobody did, and that's why, unfortunately for Sevilla, they will take a two-goal, lo well, loss, really. But it wasn't really a tough game, I have to admit. Uh, Real Madrid were on top for the majority of it, but again, I, I was speaking about this in the last episode, talking about the fact that there isn't many chances created, and again, it was one of those games, there wasn't that many chances, so to see Real Madrid win the game 2-0 is great, but when you're looking at creativity in the side, feels like there's a little bit of a lack of creativity, there was a lot of like kind of, I guess, half chances, which you're seeing in the highlights there, I mean, a couple of them weren't really worth showing you because honestly there were some of the worst shots I've ever seen in my life like for example one of them was a shot from the edge of the area which was a p-roller straight into the goalkeeper's hands and that actually counted as a match highlight I have no idea who on earth would say that's a match highlight but fair enough if you wanted to see it I could have shown it but I decided not to because it was so pointless it went with no pace at all and that's the way the game ended so 2-0 win for Madrid takes now into I think the 30th game of the season we're around that anyway, guys, which is why I was talking about the fact that that final is, well, not necessarily approaching us, but it will be coming up in the next couple of episodes. So I want to know, of course, what you guys want me to do regarding that final. But for now, Madrid with a five-point gap as we are into the last kind of 10 or so league games of the season now. And it's going to be 
tough for Barcelona to really push themselves in order to get it. The bonus as well, if we do choose to do the live stream option, is that the Copa de España, the last one of the season, falls two games or the second to last game of the season. So we could play that, the end of the season, and the Copa de España all in one live stream for you all to enjoy. That could be a possibility that we do. That's why I want you to make that decision and tell me what you guys think we should do. So anyways, as I said, we're into like the 30th league game of the season. This one is now, of course, the 30th. We've already played 29. As Sociedad, the opponents for this one. And Real Madrid, they're just looking to wrap themselves up a consecutive league title. That's their only job now, making sure they get the points that they require in order to secure this title. And uh, they'll be able to do that, I think, if they can get a victory here against Sociedad and win the next couple of games and knock the wind out of Barca's sails, provided that they drop some points. It's pretty much uh, Real Madrid's title to lose at this stage, I think. So, yeah, we'll see how it pans out, though. As 15 minutes into this game, Ben in the middle of the park, looking to find his way through. Continues his run here. Grows on a great Maisie run. You can see he gets into the area. The cutback is there. Questionable defending because why are you flicking that inside your own penalty area as it falls straight to Marcus Rashford, who makes the score 1-0. Now, we saw the Aubameyang goal in the last game, and I was speaking about luck the other day, about champions' luck, and that's exactly what happens. But once again, like, you know, I don't want to call this luck because the initial block, fair enough, the defender gets unlucky. The second one, what is he doing with his leg? Why is he trying to flick that back into play? Just clear it out if you're going to do that, or don't touch it at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was stupid of him to flick that because it fell straight to Rashford, who made the score 1-0. As we move into the 63rd minute, second half now, Ben off the field of play at this stage. He was substituted by Zidane. You can see, though, Madrid not really missing him too much as they did create an opportunity with Shakiri as the keeper gets down well to his near post to make the save. And that was all the game had in store. So the first two games were kind of, I guess, boring, in, in to play, put it plain and simply. There was nothing really happening in these games. But for Real Madrid, they've got job done on both of them. And then you can see Ben being substituted. We won't read into that too much for now. But again, Sociedad didn't really create as Barca win their game by a goal to nil as well up against Villarreal, who actually is the next team that Real Madrid will face in the league. And that's one thing you kind of have to keep tabs on. is Seeing if Barca can match the results of Real Madrid, because if not, Real will get the momentum and they'll move forward. You can see as it stands, the seven points between Real Madrid and Barca. They're on 64, Real Madrid are on 71, and they've both played 30 games. So Barca need to keep winning games. If they don't win games, they can pretty much kiss the title goodbye because Madrid will keep putting the pressure on them and saying, hey, look, we've won, you need to match it. You have to win your game, otherwise you're pretty much going to have to, I guess, succeed defeat. Or, or you know. So Villarreal in the next opponents. Now this one is quite tough because we know after last year and after this season as it started, Villarreal have been somewhat a bogey team for Ben and Real. So this one could go one of two ways. And as you're looking down the bottom, kind of, I would say, from fourth to eighth, there's actually a fairly amount, uh, a small amount of points separating those guys. So for those people down in fourth to eighth, they're fighting their own individual battles with each other, which is why this is even more important now, because Villarreal have to win this game in order to try and keep themselves in contention for a Europa League spot, which means... They're going to be no pushover here for Real Madrid. And we know that with them being the bogey team, that there is that little bit of me that thinks this might be one of those games that Real might slip up in. Well, I guess we'll find out as the game gets underway here and we see how Real and Ben are going to perform. As Villarreal got us underway, but it was them who made the first mistake. Marcus Rashford pouncing straight away on a lackadaisical approach from Villarreal. And he gets straight through, finishes it off with a left foot. And it's Real Madrid 1-0 up already inside a minute. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw Marcus Rashford clean through one-on-one. -on -one. For a second, I had to kind of, I don't know, I had to kind of like relook at the screen. I was like, wait, what's just happened here? Straight from kickoff. I mean, he's so rapid as well when he starts off there with a the kickoff. And then all of a sudden, they don't know what's hit them. He's through. It's Real 1, Villarreal 0. Pretty much nothing they could do about it at that stage. And for them, it's disheartening. But for us... What a start that is. We need to win this game in order to keep the pressure on. And uh, for Villarreal, that is not the way that you look to start off a game if you're fighting for Europa League contention. Two minutes in, they're already a goal down to Marcus Rashford. But to their credit, they got back in the game. They, they started to create chances. And one of them came in the 44th minute. Great play there as he finds a great pass out wide here to the number nine who gets taken out by Jose Gaia. Questionable defending, no idea, he's got no complaints about that guy, and I have to admit, I was fuming with the fullback when I saw that happen. 
What on earth is he thinking? The ball's already gone. Why is he making the tackle when the player's got the ball, already beaten him, and he's through on goal? Unless he's trying purposely to bring him down in hope that the keeper will save this penalty, then I have no idea what on earth he was trying to do there. But Villarreal with a spot kick now. Sansone stood over it. He steps up. He sends our goalkeeper the wrong way. And they get themselves back on level terms just before the halftime whistle. One of the best times to score in football. And uh, it's left red face for the Jose Gaia because... Again, what on earth is he thinking? He's, he's now got to go in at half-time and explain his decision-making to the rest of the lads and the manager because that is atrocious. There's no reason as to what on, why he thinks he's going to win that ball when the man's already passed him with that side tackle. So he has no complaints at all. Sansone, full credit to him, steps up and, and just makes us look silly with that spot kick. And he takes it very well indeed. But... Gaia, mate, that's atrocious. So 1-1 one, one in the game as we approach the halftime whistle. It's all to play for in the second half. And 48 minutes in as Aubameyang feeds the ball out wide to Gareth Bale. Bale into the right back. And this is absolutely brilliant from Ben. I want you to watch that back because you need to take a look at the run that he makes. If you see it, he runs straight through the middle on towards that near post. Goes across that defender there. And that's the reason why... That header has gone in. He scored one last episode. And actually, we've never seen him score headers this frequently before. And all of a sudden, he scored two in two. That is a fantastic header as well. That just shows you he's grown as a player since joining Madrid. Because before he joined here, would he have made that run towards that near post? Probably not. But that just shows you how much he has grown as a player since joining. So he gets his side back in the lead here. And as we move into the 56th minute... It was all to play for for Villarreal. Are they going to go for the draw here and throw the kitchen sink at Real? Or will they sit back? Unfortunately, though, it didn't matter. Because, Ben, you cannot give a player of his calibre that time and space on the edge of your area. Because that is the outcome every single day of the week. If you allow that to happen, you're pretty much allowing him just to score. I want to say as well, I did look at a comment in one of the previous episodes asking me to change up the celebration. Which I did. I changed it to big man. But... Every time I tried to, you know, kind of do the celebration, it just didn't seem to work. So I apologize for that, but I did change the celebration. It just didn't seem to, uh, to want to work for us. So it's Ben's 17th goal of the season. And in terms of him, I guess, reclaiming his golden boot and, and top assist for the division, he's right on course to do that at the moment. Eric Bailly substitute for Sergio Ramos. Not quite sure if that was down to an injury or not. If that was just, you know, a tactical change, maybe getting some fresh legs on from Zidane. Didn't really matter, though, because 65 minutes in... This happened. Ben steals it back from that defender. Lackadaisical defending yet again from Villarreal. Nice cut back. Gets into the area. And he grabs himself the hat-trick. Inside the area with a finesse shot. 4-1 Real Madrid. We've got 25 minutes left in this game. And it will be Ben taking away the match ball from the game here today. And this performance is very good because we actually have now got a game up against Manchester United coming up. And if you remember back to last year... When they took on each other, Real Madrid and Manchester United, they fought against each other in the, uh, the Champions League. It was quite a tough game, you know. We had to, to rely on Ben scoring a scream out at Old Trafford. And uh, when the next leg was played, it was really Real Madrid just kind of taking a game to United. Now, this year, I'm expecting exactly the same. And I'm expecting this game to be really tough against them as they come over to the Santiago Bernabeu first as that game comes to a close there. 4-1 victory for Real Madrid. But when we move into the next game in the Champions League, it's a whole different kettle of fish. Manchester United will play with a different dynamic to these Spanish teams. They're going to play with, you know, a certain kind of attacking threat when they're playing away from home, wanting to get that away goal. So for Real Madrid, who haven't really been tested that much in the division yet again this year, they're in for a really tough few games, I think, in the Champions League now. It's where it's going to get serious for them, and it's where we're going to have to rely on the big players like Ben, for example, to showcase why he is up there with the best players in the world. So let's get in to this Champions League game. The first leg up against Manchester United from the Santiago Bernabeu. I'm excited for this because this is going to be a tough game, as I said. We're going to see some competitive teams going at it against each other. And I'm sure there will be chances galore in these games to come. This one first at the Santiago Bernabeu. Second one at Old Trafford. So depending on how this one goes... I, I kind of like to have the away leg first because you know how many away goals you need in order if you have to play over at their ground. So I like to play the home leg first, it is what uh, I like in when I'm playing Champions League ties. So, yeah, we get to know how many away goals we're going to need, if any, at Old Trafford if they come here and, and play well. So the team for Real Madrid, that is it on the screen. They've got Vendel and Visor out on the wings. 
and they've actually got Shakiri as well out on the uh, the top wings. Why am I calling about the wings? I meant win backs is what I meant to say. United had a couple of interesting players though. Sten Deres in the side, Tudezebe in the side as well at CDM. But unfortunately for Real Madrid, I don't know what happened. Inside 15 minutes, they just never really got going. And Sten Dera tested the palms of a very, very good goalkeeper in the form of Rico, who made a good stop there to deny United going 1-0 up in front. So I just don't know what happened in the opening 15 minutes. Real just couldn't kind of seem to get them their, their, their foot on the ball, really. And they kept giving it away in stupid areas. So again, that was a fantastic save from Rico. Otherwise, it would have been United taking the lead in this one. And then Martins with the corner. Whips it in towards the middle. It's one in the middle, actually, by Rafael Varane, formerly, of course, of Real Madrid. And unfortunately for him, his, uh, his goalkeeper, or former goalkeeper in the form of Rico, denies him as well. 21 minutes in, and a fantastic ball to Martins on the left. Finds Lukaku. Lukaku goes close, but could only hit the side net in. I have no idea what was going on, but for the first 20 minutes, the right back and the left back were non-existent. They were getting beaten all the time down the wings. It was really frustrating. Stendera to Martins. Martins again, who lays it out towards Hendricks, who whips an incredible ball towards the back stick. And there was Anthony Martial with a left foot finish to put the home side 1-0 down. As I just said a minute ago, the full backs, I have no idea what was going on with them. They just didn't seem to know what football was. They were never in the right position at the right times. They were giving a ball away. Where on earth is Vendel? Why is he in the center of the box there? I just don't know. And then, of course, Visor just doesn't pick up Martial, which leads to Llorente being in the box, trying to pick him up. Everything was just going wrong for Real Madrid in this first half. And uh, to say the least, it was only a matter of time before they would get themselves into the halftime whistle and get an absolute scoldering from, uh, from Zidane. But quite simply put, they could have been 2 no down because another phenomenal save from Rico once again denies United uh, the chance to go even further in front. I have no idea what was happening in this game. First half, Real Madrid were getting taught a lesson by Manchester United, and that is to put it the nicest way possible. They were getting taught a lesson in footballing, and that's not something that they're used to saying. So second half started, Aubameyang back to Ben. Ben to Rashford here, eventually gets it back, finds its way through to Rashford, who should have put the hosts back into the game at 1-1. The former Manchester United man, though, could only send his effort wide of the post. And, um... As I said, getting taught a lesson is not nice, especially when you're at home in front of all your own fans. So whatever Zidane said at halftime worked to an extent because it allowed Madrid to create a chance, but they couldn't take it. And they've ended up with a 1-0 defeat from this opening tie here against Manchester United. So interesting position to be in ahead of that second leg. Not only that, they were schooled. They were absolutely schooled by Manchester United. Got dominated. And there's nothing you can say to say that United weren't the better team and did not deserve to come away from that as a 1-0 well, victor. So, disappointing way to start it. But we'll go into the next episode in the second leg and hopefully have a better performance in that one. Other than that, we're seven league games away from the end of the season, guys, with Real Madrid. I want to thank you all for watching this episode. If you did enjoy it, a like rate, I'm greatly appreciated. Make sure you tune in to the next episode to see how we get on in that second leg. Don't miss it, guys. It'll be coming at you some stage in the next couple of days. I'll see you all then, guys. Adios.